kitchen is likely one of the most used spaces in your home. Things are constantly coming in and out, getting misplaced and getting tossed in any cabinet or drawer you can find. Half of your stuff is hardly used and a quarter of the stuff is expired. And as the gatekeeper of the pantry, you're just trying to find a functional system to keep it organized. Now, when starting a big organization project like this, I don't think the hardest part is getting started. I think the hardest part is finding the time to actually do the work. Now, I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of planning, time, and even doubt that went into making today's video. And it's not even the full end result. Because in reality, the end result doesn't exist. As your family may grow and change, so does the functionality of your space. But each time you put the effort in, then you know what works and doesn't work for the next time this project comes again. So in today's video, we are decluttering and organizing the entire kitchen. Now that includes the pantry, the refrigerators, all of the upper cabinets, all of the lower cabinets, and 10 drawers. Now this video may be two hours long, but it didn't take me two hours to do this. It didn't take me a day. It took me weeks to put this together. This is a marathon video because it is a combination of four of my past videos that are compiled together to give you one long video that you can watch while you are organizing or reorganizing your own kitchen. Now, why do we organize? Yes, it's nice to have everything all pretty looking, but in reality, it's to help save time. And as a mom of three, I know how hard it is to find time. If this is your first time here, I want you to know that I'm not a very organized person. But because I'm a working mom of three, I needed a way to multiply my time. Rory Vaden put it simple in this quote, saying, you multiply your time by spending time on things today that will give you more time tomorrow. So instead of spending so much time looking for something, I'll make the time to prioritize it today so that tomorrow I don't need to waste that time. So now that you've made the decision to prioritize your organizing, then how do you actually get started and do it where it's not overwhelming? You'll see in each of my videos that the most helpful thing I did at the beginning was map out a plan. I created a drawing of each cabinet and drawer and what I plan to do in each cabinet and drawer and labeled it as either easy, medium, or hard. In some drawers and cabinets, I just did a quick declutter and in some of them, I completely moved it to another drawer or space. But let's go ahead and jump into the videos and at any point of this video, if you're enjoying the content, then I'd love for you to click that subscribe button and join this YouTube family. Now let's get started. Back to school is in full swing. My oldest is starting kindergarten and my middle one is starting pre-K and I gotta figure out school lunches and all that mess, which is what inspired today's video. I wanna prep and make it as easy as possible. So today we are reorganizing two kitchen cabinets. This way I have their water bottles ready to go each morning and also the pantry and the outside drink refrigerator. I'm going to restock the pantry and just get everything straightened out again. So by the time school starts for us, everything will be organized-ish and hopefully easier to make lunches. My pantry and cabinets have seen worse days, but one of my goals is to keep up with the organization. It's never going to be perfectly organized all of the time. And while I have no control over that, as there's so many other people that also live in our house, but I do want to stay on top of it as best as I can. So we'll, it will never go back to the way that it was 
when I first organized it. So the motivation is here for you if you need it today. So I'm first gonna start off in this medicine cabinet, which I did organize uh, a couple months back and it's kind of gotten a little messy again. But one thing I am going to switch out is a lot of the baby food Rye no longer eats. So I'm going to kind of get, create a separate like snacky section for just his foods because he just turned one and then reorganize the space a little bit. So that wasn't too hard. I started kind of in an easy spot. So this is what the cabinet looked like before. Like I mentioned before, I, or I just organized the space a couple months ago and the biggest thing that I changed was adding those turntables for the medicine and it has been game changer. I highly recommend it. I have it for all of our kids' medicines. And then now this is just gonna be like a snack area. So for Rye, who's one years old. So I just wanna kind of keep it clean as best I can. Now the next space we're moving to is going to be this cup cabinet. And my biggest struggle here is that I need some kind of space for the kids like water cups that I guess you could say the ones that they take to school with lids on them, not really like everyday cups and also go through a lot of these glasses that we don't use and declutter those and kind of create a better space for kids cups. So step one is to declutter, and then step two is to reorganize. So I love this cup organizer. I have one on the other side. I think it's a different brand, but this one is from Amazon and it has four different cup sections that you can, you know, put cups on. And I'm just gonna put it together here. And then this is where any type of cup that they need to bring to school or we take with us when we are going somewhere is gonna go here. They each have three cups and I think the one is at school right now and then one is, uh, um, or maybe two are in the dishwasher. So right now I only have two clean ones. But next thing I need to do is move these cabinets and I didn't know that you could take them out. Basically there's this little metal piece and you can like make them whatever size you need. So I need to create a bigger space on the bottom so that I can fit that cup holder thing and then um, kind of shift all of these shelves up.
So if you do here, welcome. My name is Michelle and I'm a mom of three kids, five and under, but my oldest sailor is starting kindergarten and my middle Savannah is starting pre-K. They both were at like a daycare preschool before because I do work from home full time. And this is their first year going to like, let's just say a real school. So they're switching schools and it's really exciting. So this is our first year kind of prepping and getting ready for all of the school stuff. So I do a lot of cleaning and organizing videos and it's not because I absolutely love cleaning and organizing or I'm the best at it. It's because I'm in a phase in my life right now where it is very chaotic, but is very necessary. Now what I've learned reorganizing and these cabinets over and over again, also decluttering, here's my decluttering gla um, glasses pile is that it's no, it's not gonna be perfect the first time. It's something that you do have to consistently keep up with. So next I'm moving on to my pantry. And if you get anything out of today's video, I want you to know that it's not perfect all the time and that's okay. You're gonna try something and it's not gonna work and you're gonna change it up and you're gonna upkeep it and it's okay. What I've realized after organizing several areas in our home, like disastrous areas, is that it's not necessarily about the initial organization of it, it's about the upkeep afterwards. Although something may look pretty, it may not function well for you. Just for example, I have these pretty, pretty cereal bins where I didn't want to see the boxes, so I would put them in these containers and it looked nicer, but it didn't function well. <laughs> they made my cereal stale and I just, I like having the box. So cereal boxes it is for now. But some stuff, I like it being pretty organized. So I like to think, just try it out. If something doesn't work out, then give yourself permission to change it. And it doesn't have to be perfect all the time. So I'm starting with the floor in the bottom space because I don't have a, a small pantry, but it is kind of a tighter space. And I couldn't even barely walk in the pantry, so I needed to take everything out. I did have those little like racks in there. So if you do have a tighter space or a smaller pantry, you can add extra storage by getting those little shelves and they just kind of hook on to the shelf above. And those were from M Design, like I ordered them directly from the M Design website. I also have this shelf thing I got from Ikea. And initially I was going to put um, have like meals in there, like dinner meals, anything that was belonged in the pantry that I needed to cook dinner. I could put like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday dinner in here. I never got around to doing that. So what I plan to use this little shelf for is to put the girls lunch boxes in so that every day they have somewhere to put their lunch box. Since we don't have a mud room area space, then I just figured they could put it in the pantry. So I got the bento boxes. I know everybody already has these, but this is my first time getting them. So um, actually I got one brand that was the, the bento brand and this is the, what is this? The SL brand. And I solely got it because of the thing on the front, the princesses, because Savannah likes mermaids, a sailor likes princesses. And then the lunch boxes I got from Sam's. So the actual bento box brand, and this other brand is very similar. Like this is the, this one is, is, was a little bit more expensive than the other one, but it had mermaids on it. So this one has a couple different compartments. If you're not familiar with them or you were looking into another brand, the trays come out and then you can just wash those. And then they're easy to just clip 
clipped together. So what I've heard of these is that the if you put like ranch or dressing in there, then it stays, it doesn't fall out. And this one is just a little different. So you can see like the difference between, between the two. So the first day of school is actually a half day. So I'll be testing these out on the second day of school. So these little, little drawers, I'm gonna have each of their lunch boxes in and then hopefully like when they come home from school, they can just put them in here and then I can grab them and either make lunch the first day, um, I mean the night before, or the morning of. So if any of you moms make lunches, do you do it the night before or the morning of? Like does the, the bento box, it seems pretty like sealed tight. So do you make it and then put that in the refrigerator or do you put the food in the refrigerator and then pack it into those bento boxes in the morning? Also, if your kiddos started school already, let me know what grades your kids are going into. We've had this conversation and you seem to agree with me. But when there's complications, you withdraw and leave me to be. When there's a problem, you become like a wall. And every time I trip, it's a free fall. Why don't you have So I reorganized and decluttered these cabinets a couple months ago and I forgot I had some cabinets with a lot more empty space. So instead of keeping all of our extra stuff on the, the bottom of the pantry floor like trash bags, extra paper plates and stuff, I decided to just use this cabinet for all of the extra stuff so it doesn't end up on the pantry floor. So any of the bins or containers in the pantry that are white are from Ikea and then anything that is clear is from Amazon. But it's been a while since I've told this story. So if you're eating, just beware. But one time I went in our pantry several, a couple of years ago and I saw like this little worm type thing. And at first I was like, not completely alarmed by it but then i started seeing more of them and i asked chris i'm like what is this he's like oh it's just you know it's fine it's nothing not a big deal or anything like that and i even had pest control come in and look because it wouldn't be like infested but there would be like one or two at a time and then like the next day i would see like one or two again kind of like some of them were crawling on the wall so I even had him come and he was like, oh, those are nothing to be concerned about. So I just thought, okay, okay, we'll take care of them as we see them. About a week or two later, I kid you not, I started seeing almost like little cocoon type things. And that's when I started to freak out a bit. All right, so maybe you know what they are already, maybe not. But about a week or two after that, we started seeing moths everywhere 
So it turns out that they were pantry moths. And if you've ever dealt with pantry moths, like they multiply and they can like infest your pantry in your home. And it is just, it was so mortifying. Like I, I told Chris at one point, I know I'm dramatic, but I was like, I want to move out of this house. It is, it's, it wasn't like terrible, but there were moths. We've started seeing them everywhere. Not only that, they were a pain to get rid of. So real quick, right here, I had this little container from Ikea and I had it in one of my drawers in the kitchen and I decided I didn't like it in the drawer, so I took it out. So I had it kind of just by the side, but this thing is perfect for everything baking. So I like to make our own, um, the girl's birthday cakes. So it's kind of perfect because I can put the dye and the sprinkles and kind of section it out and I, just thought that was a, cu a cute idea. But back to my story, um, anyway, so what happens, what later I found out Googling it, because we finally, we didn't know what it was for a while, is that they will, they will like lay eggs in grain type things. So I think that I had seen a bunch in one of our cereal boxes, but you can like get them from buying bread at a grocery store if the grocery store has has kind of a problem with them or in cereal and stuff like that. So I think that it was either from a cereal box or from a um, grant like oatmeal or something that we must have had. And then it that's where it started and then it just continued to spread. So what I did was I had to basically get rid of just about everything in our pantry. I didn't have anything in jars or containers. Everything was just in its original boxes. So I, I did have to get rid of all of that. So the good thing about organizing and putting it in like sealed tight containers is that bugs or in case you do have pantry moths, they are going to be contained and don't spread everywhere. So I got rid of everything in our pantry pretty much. And then anything that I thought was still good, I, I sealed it in plastic bags. That way I could see like where it was coming from. Like if it was, there were still eggs in there. And like a couple days later, if there was a moth that grew in there, then you knew that that kind of was in, an infested or thing that needed to be thrown away. And then I bought these moth traps and put them all over the house. Now, I, I, like I say, it wasn't like infested, like you would just walk in and there was just moths all in your face. There would just be like every day I would see two or three. And it just, knowing that it came through there was, was just like gross, I guess you can say. But anyway, luckily we have never had an issue since then. But a couple months later, I did go to a grocery store and I was looking in the bread section and I saw a moth flying around and I knew exactly that, exactly what it was. And I ended up not buying bread that day because a lot of it comes from grocery stores too. So just be on the lookout. You were my best friend. Didn't care about those good on the weekends. I'll be in fools drifting the deep space So brave and so stupid Just like the movies How it's gonna stay in the fight with you Just thinking we would do this until we couldn't do it Each and every high, every night with you You and me so clueless We were just broken, shattered Singing along to nothing matters
so now I have everything cleaned out and in those bottom um, shelves that I added I do have refrigerator liners on the bottom because I'll put like potatoes some kind of sometimes like vegetables like that or fruit limes and lemons and if any of them go bad what happens is they start like leaking stuff on the bottom so I just have those liners on the bottom so if I do have something that goes bad, which happens pretty often, then it doesn't leak all over the floor. So I am going to do a quick pantry restock. If you notice, I don't buy a ton of snacks because I am a big snacker and so are my kids. And I know what happens is it just all the snacks get eaten and no real food, as you can say, gets eaten. So even though school's starting, I'm going to try to not buy a whole bunch of like snacky, snacky foods. And keep it as healthy as possible, but we'll see if I cave later on. I mean, not everything in here is super nutritionist, but we're gonna try. And the area that I'm gonna finish with is our drink refrigerator outside. We have this refrigerator outside, we have a refrigerator and freezer inside, and then we have our deep freeze, which was the one that went out a couple of weeks ago, and the meat just spilled all over the garage. So if you haven't seen that video, then I'll link that up here at the top. But this one here is mainly drinks and anything that doesn't fit in our other refrigerator, but mainly drinks. And it hasn't been cleaned in, I don't know, the last time it was cleaned actually. So we're going to clean this refrigerator out and then I'm going to restock it with all of my LaCroix waters because I think LaCroix is the best sparkling water brand, that and Topo Chico. But let's get started. So we went to this like back to school bash at their new school and it was like meet the teacher and everything and um, they had this whole table full of volunteer sign up 
and I'm looking at it and I'm going, oh, I'd love to, to volunteer and like do all this stuff. And it's like, oh, meet every week or meet bi-weekly. And then I'm like, what type of commitment are we looking at? Like, I don't want to volunteer and then it'd be like a full-time job. So, but I did sign up for a fall festival. So I'm going to start slow. And then as I get more time, I'm going to try to do a lot more volunteer. So if you guys are like any of you moms are like room mom or um, you volunteer a lot, like what are some good ideas that you do at your school um, or what type of commitment do you feel like it is not too much or um, like just the right amount of time? It's so weird. Like I think I'm overthinking this a lot, like everything about about starting school. Like I want to be the cool mom and like really involved and like do all this stuff. But then I also am, I don't want to overwork myself either, but it'll be fine and I'll work out. And um, needless to say, I'm probably more nervous about it than the kids are. But was anyone else that way when your kids started pre-K in kindergarten? I'm sure I'm not the only one. just using the e-cloths to wipe everything down I come to really like them so e-cloths you just get them wet and then somehow you wipe down the surface and it kills 99% of the germs and you don't have to use any product or anything with it so fall is right around the corner and you guys know that I love seasonal decorating and this year for fall I'm stepping up my game I watched back my videos from the last two years and this year I'm going to do things a little differently and a little bit more elegant even though it's still 105 degrees outside but that's okay so make sure you are subscribed if you're not already so you don't miss when that video comes out but thank you guys so much for watching I hope you got some motivation to get a few things done also just a quick reminder to check out beyond body for your personalized wellness book and use my code MICHELLE10 for an additional 10% off. But we are all clean now and restocked up, but I will see you guys in my next video.
going to be completely honest, I dreaded organizing these cabinets at all costs. About a year ago, I went from major messy to now it's just an individual bins messy, but I'm hoping to change that today. So it took a lot out of me to reorganize this space because what happens to most of us, or at least me, is we take everything out of this space with all this motivation to clean it and then you stare at your counters and you regret your decision immediately. But to keep that from happening, that's why we're gonna map out a plan and take it one day at a time. When I convinced myself my goal this month was to organize our entire kitchen, the thought of overwhelm just flooded me. But one of my biggest successes to avoid the burnout and get it all done is to map out a plan and take it one day and one step at a time. So in today's video, we are going to be organizing and decluttering seven upper kitchen cabinets in total. Some of them are gonna be easier to do because they're semi-organized. I might just do some decluttering. And some of them I need to completely change the way it's organized. So before we get started, this is everything that is currently in the cabinets. So I mentioned earlier that feeling of regret you get after you take everything out of a cabinet, counter, whatever it is you're organizing and you're halfway into it and then you're just like, what the heck am I doing? Um, I just want to be done with this. So I've done a lot of research on organizing considering I make videos on it. I have tried different ways of doing it, different ways of decluttering, hoping that there's a magic trick to the way that I do it. If I'm asking the right questions, if I'm decluttering the right stuff, if I become minimalist, if I'm not minimalist. And I have just come to find out that I just need to do it on my own terms in my own style. And the feeling of taking everything out and just feeling overwhelmed and not knowing what to do is a feeling that I often get. So one of the ways to avoid that feeling is to actually map out a plan for the spaces that I want to organize. I mentioned that I had seven different cabinets and I'm labeling them knowing which ones are going to be harder to accomplish and ones that are going to be easier. Ones that are going to be easier are just going through looking and seeing if there's any items that i wanted to clutter whereas the harder cabinets are going to be ones that i need to completely reorganize because the system that i have going on is not working and i decided that i'm going to start in one of our hardest cabinets so everybody welcome to cabinet number one this has all of our medicine and usually I only use the first two sections because, you know, I got to climb on the counter to get to the top section. So that is more of like, I don't know, junk. What is even up there? And then the bottom two cabinets I dedicated to medicine. So I had bought little containers from Target and then I said, okay, this is where all of like the ointments are going to go. This is where all the band-aids are going to go. This is where all of the um, flu and cold medicine is going to go. And it's just like everywhere. It doesn't, it's not working. So I saw somebody use um, turntables or Lazy Susan for their medicine, medicines or whatever. So that's what I went. I went to Target and I bought two different turntables and I figured that that's where I'm going to start. I can say right now, this is one of my favorite cabinets, but leave me a comment down below. How do you organize your medicine? Is it nicely organized and labeled? Is it thrown in a bin or a box? No shame, I've done both, obviously. So I do promise I'm more excited about this project than what my face says, but whenever I'm just starting a project, I get really focused. And then when I film, I'm just like, this is what it is, this is what it is. And then I'm thinking about how I'm gonna do it and what I am eventually gonna say in the voiceover. So yeah, anyway, that's just me being really focused and trying to figure it out. So I have these two turntables. All of this product is from Target. The turntables were 
$20, either $20 or $25. I don't remember. And then the other clear bins were $6 each. So I decided to buy two different turntables to better organize and section out the type of medicine that we use. We utilize our kitchen space for our medicine cabinet. I know a lot of people put it in the bathroom. That's probably <laughs> the most likely place. I don't know, you guys let me know. Is it in your bathroom? Is it in your kitchen? Is it somewhere else? I don't know, let me know. We just have so much kitchen space that for us it just seemed okay to put it there. And in our bathroom, we really only have like two cabinets. So anyway, that's where it goes. And I like it up high away from the kids, especially after we had kids, it was in a lower cabinet. And I was like, yeah, that's not going to work. So I am just sectioning out the type of medicine. And in this cabinet area, I have all of, um, I want to say like a, the adult type medicine. And then in the next cabinet you'll see in a little bit is where I put all of the baby medicine. So I'm basically just sectioning it out by category. So bandages, bigger bandages, um, uh, what is it, band-aids go in one area whenever the girls get a cut. I think, I think band-aids for kids are just something to play with, I almost feel like. But so they open up all the band-aids and you see that they just leave all the trash in there and you know, so anyway, I'm going to create a little section for band-aids and then I have like ointments. So Neosporin, anything like that. I'm going through them as well and deciding if there are anything that's expired or that we've had for, you know, 10 plus years. I feel like, um, obviously we, we don't use it. So I'm going to, and it's expired, so we'll get rid of it. So this is the Bright Room brand from Target, just so you know. And I have everything sectioned out, bandages, um, stomach care, motion sickness, and then I have a whole section for allergy medicine, band-aids, um, like Tylenol, ibuprofen type medicine, and then ointments for cuts. If you saw my Instagram a few months back from December all the way until almost about now or maybe April, I feel like I have been sick like every other week. Right after Thanksgiving, I got strep throat. So while we were doing like Christmas festivities, then I unfortunately had strep throat. I passed it on to Chris, which he doesn't get sick as much as I do. And then in January, I started getting like this massive sore throat. It was the worst sore throat I've ever had in my life. And of course, I think it's a virus. I have these, you know, you know what tests. And I'm like, nah, I don't know. And lo and behold, I had it. And my worst symptom was having just a horrible sore throat. And then I had congestion for about two weeks. So in those clear bins, I want to mention earlier, I had one whole section for cold and flu medicine and then the next section was all like preventative care vitamins tests an immune booster and then and mostly vitamins and then last year I was a part of simply earth so i got a ton of essential oils so i'm just kind of moving the oils and organizing them a little better so anyways in january i was out in february i think i got the stomach bug in march i got i'm pretty sure i had the flu and also in January, I got another stomach bug. So embarrassing. I was at a friend's house. Well, well, you know, like when you're a new mom, it's hard to meet new friends. And so it was our first time over there. She invited us to a birthday party, our first time there. We get there, we're like talking, meeting new people. And I had a half a glass of wine and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I, I think I need to sit down. And right when they're singing happy birthday, I ran to the bathroom and started throwing up. And I was like, Chris, we need to leave now. He's like, what happened? And I'm like, I think I'm, I think I'm getting sick. He's like, okay, would you want to sit on the couch? I'm like, no, no, I am sick. I run out. I'm like, can you go get the kids? I run outside. I start throwing up in their yard. Y'all mortified, mortified. 
and um, I'm like, get in the car. We need to go home. Something is wrong with me. And people are like, oh, is it something you ate? I'm like, I don't know, but this is not normal. And um, then on the way home, I mean, I have this bag. I'm puking in the bag. Needless to say, I had the stomach bug pretty bad. And I still couldn't figure out what I took. I was like, I took those immunity booster pills so that I wouldn't get the flu. And here I am sick with a stomach bug. But it wasn't that. Sailor ended up getting it sick three days later. And just showing you guys, this is all the stuff I decluttered. So that was my March. And April, I think I'm doing pretty good. Just hoping that I don't get sick again. So this is the next day and this is what is all like the kids medicine cabinet and then I also have baby stuff. So it's like baby food, snacks, bottles I need to get rid of and then kid medicine. I initially did not plan to use turntables in this cabinet, but I love the functionality of the way the other cabinet turned out. So I went back to Target and bought two more turntables and then two more clear bins and I plan to organize it very similar to the other cabinet. Right now I'm standing in the corner I see you from across the room It's kind of crowded here But I know you see me too Everybody's singing oh Everybody's singing oh I don't know what it is about you It must be in the way you move Just say you want me to We got nothing to So I'm at that point where I took everything out and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I have to finish this. But anyway, I have a ton of bottles because I kept a few. So after the girls grew out of them, I knew that we wanted more kids. So I was like, let me just use some of these bottles just in case. I kept some and now it's time to declutter, donate them. So I'm, I'm doing another like kind of donate bag and then trash bag. But I did read somewhere that bottles are only good for two years. And I had some of these from, you know, Savannah's three and Sailor's five. So I think I may have ended up recycling those. But I did go to Target. Like I mentioned, I got two. Thankfully, they had two left of the turntables. And then they had a ton of those clear bins. But now I'm going to organize all of the kid type medicine. One turntable is going to have baby medicine, like the infant Tylenol and infant and teething stuff. And then the other one is going to have the kids Tylenols, um, thermometers and those little syringe type things you get with prescriptions. All right, question for you. Are you goal oriented or are you task oriented? Let me explain. Do you like checking things off your ta daily to do list or do you prioritize what's going to make a change and drive you to your goals? By the way, I do think everyone should have goals. I have a goal getter guide you can actually download. It's free and it's in my description box below to help you map out your goals. But if you can't tell, I am pretty goal oriented, meaning that when I have a goal, my day will focus around the what I need to do to accomplish that goal. So when I mapped out this plan to organize the upper kitchen cabinets, then every single day or at least, you know, three to four days a week, I'm going to work on one cabinet. So that then became a priority over laundry or over whatever I needed to get done that day. Now, do I avoid all of my other tasks? No, but I am very focused on this one priority to reach me to my goals. 
I do this with home projects, with exercise and personal goals, with business goals, and also with family goals, things that I do not do that are going to distract me. Like there are times of the day where I do not pick up my phone because it interferes with my quality time with my kids. So you can watch and listen and I am like there's no shame. I am notorious for just absorbing information and not doing anything with it. But the thing that's going to move the needle for you today is to take action. That's the hardest part, but I promise that is what's going to make the most progress towards your goals. Let me feel your love again. Cause I've been running round in circles screaming out your name. Take me to a different place. Just the two of us and we can stay up all night Kissing under street lights Doing what we want to Doing what we need to do Staying up all night Everything is alright Oh, I wanna be with you Oh, I wanna be with you Let me be that someone who can hold your hand I don't even know if you can understand How you make me feel I got you in my head Now the next few cabinets uh, are gonna be a lot easier. I started with the two hardest cabinets and now that I've got that done, I feel a bit of relief knowing that I can finish this project because everything else is going to be a breeze. It's mainly going to be just decluttering and then reorganizing after I've done the declutter. I ended up decluttering a lot of our brown plates. I had a whole set of like the bigger, the smaller, and the bowls that were brown. I bought them at Walmart when we bought our very first house, which was in 2010. So that's how old they were. I had since then bought um, white plates from Ikea, and now I'm just going back and organizing them. Now, one thing I was like, what is going to look the prettiest because this is going to be on YouTube and obviously it has to be pretty. And I'm like, you know what? We use paper plates, like legit use paper plates every single day, less dishes, more function. And I look at this and I go back and I just reorganize all of our paper plates at the bottom. And I'm like, this is just what's gonna function for us. Kids plates, paper plates, and then the glass plates I'll put at the top and then the bowls. So that's how I ended up doing it. More so for functionality over aesthetics and beauty. So this is all the stuff that I am putting in a box and I did end up taking it to Goodwill that weekend. The next cabinet is all of our cups, our plastic cups we use the most. So those are what's on the bottom, our glass, cups more fancier occasions are at the top and then we have kids cups and coffee mugs so everything that we use daily is on the you know bottom two shelves like it should be and my whole goal here is just to declutter In an upcoming video, I'll be reorganizing the lower cabinets as well in the kitchen. And with that, I found a company that makes these custom slider shelves. So I will walk you through the process of what, how I ordered them, how we measured the cabinets, 
how they came in and how I reorganized it with the shelves and I absolutely love them. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not already so that you get notified whenever that video comes out. But these little contraptions on our coffee mug, they just allow you to stack the coffee mug. So um, they, they work out really good because although we do have a lot of upper cabinet space, I don't like climbing on the counters every single time I need to grab something from up there. So if I didn't have these and I would have two shelves full of coffee mugs, um, but these little things just help you stack them. And I got them on Amazon and I, I really like them. These are all of the cups this go around that I am parting ways with. I am down to the last two cabinets. I must have been on a massive roll this day. Like once I get going, I just keep going. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't declutter a lot in this space. Um, I know that when I've shown this cabinet before, people are like, why do you have so much spices? Well, you're supposed to keep what brings you joy, and this brings my husband a lot of joy. He likes to grill, he likes to cook, he likes to do all things grilling, and he's been on cook-off teams at his previous work, so they've just had, he's accumulated a ton of different spices and grilling stuff, so this is, I never explained that before, but this is why there's so many. I don't use a lot of this, but I'm not gonna throw away all of this stuff um, just yet because it is his his stuff that he wants to use so oh yeah slap your mama that is some really good spice definitely as we're in crawfish season we use that a lot so it's a southern type spice if you're from the south you probably may have heard of it so as I don't do much in this cabinet except try and clean it a little bit go through I tried to see if there's anything that was expired but the main thing that I did the first go around was I these mini shelves similar to like if you see the the can shelves in the pantry where you can stack them so you can see they have, they're like bleachers you know where you can like put the spices on and then you're able to see what's behind the spices so right there that's what i'm showing these little shelves that i can expand and this is a really good organizing tool for the way that we stack all of our different seasonings and spices so all of the hardcore carnivore spices that you see in our cabinet are amazing this is actually chris's cousin's wife is from australia she's a meat chef created this hardcore carnivore seasonings all different types they are some of the best, so you can check them out if you are interested. So this cabinet, basically I just cleaned up a little bit, not a whole lot of changes, but um, in that, but that's a good thing because that means the first time I organized it, it's still functional. So I just decided to keep it that way. Now this is the last cabinet. This one is also kind of organized and functional. This is where all of our Yeti cups go. I know lots of questions, why do you have so many? Because we just like them and they bring us joy and I don't know what else to tell you. But anyway, I did order these organizing trays. They're like the M design trays and they're perfect for those Yeti cups. However, I do need to go through and declutter some of them. Most of them were given to us through work functions, stocking stuffers, like they they're just they just make great gifts so that's another reason why we have so many but i'm going to go through some of them make sure that we have lids for everything make sure that everything fits and um then i'm going to just clean it up a bit and reorganize it i was knocked down heard the countdown through the haze in the face of defeat yeah I was ruled out with no bail out on my own, all alone, left to bleed out. But I rose up from the ground, just like I was built down. All the odds were against me. So, seriously, y'all, what is the goal that you are going to make progress towards this week or this month? 
write it down on a piece of paper, write it in my comments section. We're all here to encourage each other. This is a community for a reason, but seriously, only 3% of people actually write down their goals. So write them down, make them real and start working towards them. But I hope you guys got some good ideas and motivation. If you enjoyed any part of this video, I really hope that you would subscribe and I will see you guys next week in my next video. Give me something new. I want it back through and through. Question, how often do you organize your kitchen cabinets? And if they are already all perfectly organized, how many attempts did it take you to get to where you love it? I like to think that the kitchen cabinets are a little tricky because you can just shove everything in a cabinet, close the cabinet doors, and then voila, you never have to look at it until you need to go in there and find something. But because it's not just an open mess, then I feel like it kind of gets pushed in the back burner. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with my kitchen. I love the white cabinets and the countertops, but I tend to not open up the cabinet doors because there's just so much in there. But today I'm gonna finally finish my whole kitchen declutter and organizing, ending with all of the lower level cabinets. I'm gonna start by planning what I'm going to do in each cabinet. I'm gonna go through, declutter the stuff I don't need, reorganize the stuff that needs to be reorganized, and then I'm also adding slide a shelf shelves onto some of the lower cabinets just to make life a little easier. Next thing I'm going to do is start planning out how I'm going to declutter and reorganize the lower kitchen cabinets. If you haven't seen my other two videos, then check them out. I'll link them down below. And basically, one thing I changed from the last time I organized to this most recent time I organized was to plan everything out before I get started. So I did this with my upper cabinets, the drawers, and now with the lower cabinets. So what I'm basically doing is drawing a map of all of the cabinets that I have, and I'm writing in what I have in each cabinet. Not every little thing that I own, I'm basically just categorizing it. Like, what do I have in this cabinet? Is it a bunch of junk? Is it my pots and pans, etc. Then I'm going to write down what I need to do in each cabinet because one of the things that overwhelms me the most is taking everything out and just not knowing what to do and then I'm left with a mess. Then I feel unmotivated and feel like I accomplish nothing. So when I can write it down before I take everything out, I can plan what I want to do. So for example, in one cabinet, I might just declutter and not do any type of mass organizing. In another cabinet, I might have bought some product and want to reorganize the way that it is. Some of the cabinets, just the things in it don't make sense where it's at. So I might be swapping what's in that cabinet with another cabinet. And also one of the things that I wish that I had were, was more drawers. I realized that I like pulling out drawers more than having things in the back of the cabinet. So I did some research on Wayfair and I found this slide a shelf where you can actually 
put in your own shelf, meaning that you buy these shelves and then you install them yourself. So you don't have to have a professional carpenter come out and, you know, pay a lot of money to do it. So I found them on Wayfair and then I actually went directly to their site where you can customize them the way you want. And I ended up purchasing some of them for the cabinets and I absolutely love them. So when I get to the second part of this video, then we will start installing those. If you have any trouble getting started on any type of organizing project, the biggest thing that I found that helps me is just to take it in small pieces. And I know that that's an obvious tip, but breaking it out to smaller pieces and doing just one thing at a time has been so helpful. So I created this map and I'm starting in cabinet number one. I've labeled all of them so I know where to start and what I plan to do in each cabinet. So here I don't plan to do a whole lot of organizing. It's a little bit of random stuff in here. So my main purpose in this cabinet is to just declutter. You, you've been hiding in the shadows way too long. You, always thought that you were weak but babe you're wrong yeah you better step into the light just give it a try think that it's time you let that spark out you've been hiding in the shadows way too long So I'm not gonna lie, this cabinet was pretty easy, which was a great start to kind of ease into this project. We have a ton of napkins because we host a lot of parties and basically I just moved out some of the blankets and some of the stuff that didn't belong. And I'll plan on keeping this the party supply area. This next cabinet I labeled as a little bit harder because I have all of our serving dishes and serving trays in here. The first thing is we have too many. So my main goal here is to do a lot of decluttering. And secondly, they're all different shapes and sizes. So I really struggled with how to organize it. So I didn't buy any product or anything to organize it. I'm just going to declutter, put everything back and see what I have. Give it a try, know that it's time you let that spark out. You've been hiding in the shadows way too long. Oh, oh, oh. I had a really sweet subscriber reach out to me through Instagram who has been through so much over the last few years, but they are ready to get started on their decluttering and organizing journey, um, but feeling overwhelmed. And I just want to say that I felt that way too. Now, I will say that I didn't necessarily have like an excuse for just like having a lot more stuff. Um, and just not decluttering over several years. But really when the Netflix shows like the Marie Kondo show, the home edit, those kind of shows opened my eyes that there is a organizing way and there are ways to make your life more easier. Um, I always resisted change. Like it, like to me, it feels so stressful to organize and keep it organized than it is just to leave it the way it was because it's a project. But coming here on YouTube and watching YouTube videos and watching like real life people do this really gave me confidence to try it out. Now what I have realized is that I'm not one that feels comfortable just like throwing everything away or just getting rid of everything at once. I kind of have to go at my own pace. I have to build up the momentum to do it and then create the habit of doing it a lot more often, especially if I'm not going to just like do a mass 
get rid of everything all at one time. After being at it for a couple of years and and some would say it's the most chaotic time in my life, three kids, five and under, I realized that it's a marathon and not a sprint. I've also said this in a recent video, being on camera, I feel like I have to do things a certain way for everyone else. And I always have to step back and just say, you know, it doesn't matter what other people do. I need to do what's the right pace and what's right for me. I feel like a lot of people can relate to that just with social media and trying to be like everyone else and do it just like everyone else. It's always great to just go at your own pace and, and do it in a way that feels right for you. So in this cabinet, I did declutter a lot of the items. I am starting my donation box. I'm gonna keep in the corner until I've completed all of the cabinet drawer, all of the cabinets, and then I'm gonna head over and take it to Goodwill. But I have read a couple of the books from some of the expert organizers, and the one thing that really stuck out to me the most is when you don't know where to get started, they recommend getting started in storage spaces like the attic or the closet or the drawers or cabinets because once you start going out into the main area, then you have places to store things when you need them. Whereas if those spaces are full all the time and you start, you know, in the living room or wherever and you want to keep something but you don't want it out in the open, then you don't have a place to put it. So you may use those things in your attic spaces and your, you know, closet spaces the least. So that's a good place to start. Now, I do feel like everyone has their own method, so it just depends on which method works best for you. I've also seen start with the trash, so go in and throw everything away that's trash first and then go back and reorganize it. Or you can ask yourself questions when decluttering. There's even like this chart you can say, do I need it? Do I use it? Do I love it? Do I know someone who can use it? Can I sell it? And then you kind of answer these, this, web of questions and then it can help you decide what to do with it you can ask if it brings you spark or joy but it's like every item has its own story for you so you have to decide and you have to decide when that story is going to be over and it's time to get rid of it or if you want to keep it so in this drawer this is chris's drawer it has like a meat grinder and food processor i don't know what any of that stuff is so i couldn't get rid of it so I just kind of went in, cleaned it out and reorganized it. This next drawer, I have a couple of kitchen gadgets. I'm gonna go through um, some of the stuff I don't need. I, I don't know why I bought that tortilla maker so long ago. I've maybe used that thing one time. So I think it's time to end the story with my tortilla maker. But if you are one of the better organizers or declutterers who are in this community, then can you please comment some of your best tips of letting go of sentimental items? And then if you are struggling with that, then be sure to read the comments to get some good advice some, from some others in this community. In this cabinet, I have some more random stuff and similar to the last cabinet, I am going to do a lot of decluttering. So I had my crock pot in this cabinet and then I had my Instapot in another cabinet with some more of my bigger pots and pans. And I want to just put all of my larger kitchen appliances together. So I'm gonna put my crock pot here and then I'm gonna go over here, grab my Instapot and also move that over here. So that way I have those appliances in this cabinet. 
Now, moving back to the first cabinet, I don't know if you remember, I said this was going to be more of like the party supplies. Well, I have a ton of these plastic silverware, so I'm going to move that over here. That way I can get rid of that large box that's taking up so much space. Most of the cookie tins I'm boxing up and giving to my mom. And then I did have like a dehumidifier that I am donating because I have another one that I use more often. But here is my famous koozie cabinet. And I just can't help but laugh. We have so many koozies. And the very first time I organized, I got like lots of hate for having so many koozies, which I would kind of get curious. Why does it bother so many people what other people have in their cabinets? But anyway, Okay, I do have a lot of koozies, so I'm going to get rid of a lot. I think that we've just like accumulated so many over the years, and um, a lot of them are from weddings and from events and from whatever people come over, they leave their koozies, and I just don't think to throw them away. I'm just like, just throw them in the koozie jar, just throw them in the koozie bin or whatever. So anyway, that we have a lot. So I'm getting rid of everything in this bag. This one is from our wedding in 2013. So this year will be 10 years married for us, but it's so funny. I have to keep that one though. And now welcome to my decluttering thought process. No, I'm just kidding. So anyway, I'll so I'm saying goodbye to about half of them. And then when people come over and borrow them, I'm just going to say, just go ahead and keep them. But this cabinet is one that I'm going to be decluttering and then I'm actually gonna swap out all of the stuff and put it to a cabinet on the right side and I'm gonna keep that cabinet open and put bowls in that one. But we finally got our slide of shelves in and actually, I mean, they didn't really take that long. It said it takes like four to six weeks because they are, they're kind of custom made meaning that you order from like a drop down size, but it goes all the way, I think in like one eighth sizes or one quarter sizes. So you can get very, very close to the exact measurement. And then you can also pick the type of wood that you want. You can have it unfinished and you can paint it. Or um, I think I got the maple or I'm not exactly sure what, what color I got, um, but it's all listed on the website. So I was really impressed with the way that these came in and we thought that it would be really difficult to install, but surprisingly it was really easy. Those, those um, cardboard things help put the measurements exact so that you can just um, install them and slide them in without like mismeasuring anything. So I'm gonna start with this left cabinet that I just decluttered. And the only thing is, is that you do have to be specific about the measurements. There's like a whole chart on how to measure your cabinet. And I, since we have the hinge there, right there on the left, you can see you had to kind of create the space to where you're measuring with that hinge. And I just kind of mis mismeasured it. I needed them to be a little bit longer. So I wish that I would have um, measured them a little better. Cause what they do is they'll take off a half an inch. So I, I already took off a half an inch and then they took off an additional half inch just to make sure the measurements were right. So it ended up being a little bit too narrow. So I lost a little bit of space, but they, they're non-returnable. So we are just going to make it work. If I ever do the other half of the kitchen, then I'll know to make sure that I measure, um, a half an inch, not take off so many inches when I'm inputting the measurements, if that made any sense at all. So Chris went ahead and installed the first one just to make sure that we knew what we were doing and it works perfectly. Now, I love everything about these slider shelves because you can reach the items in the back. You don't have to take everything out in the front to get to the items in the back. But the only thing is that, like I mentioned before, you do lose a little bit of space. And I figure that out when I'm trying to 
put things back in the cabinet. Now, this bowl area, which is to the right of our dishwasher, is disastrous. It's impossible to get a bowl out. Like, they all fall down. So, my whole idea is to install move the bowls to the other cabinet and then we'll install shelves in this cabinet and then put something else there. So now I'm going to let Chris go ahead and install this one. Walking home late at night, maybe half past two, a little drunk when I'm alright. I've been hanging with you And it feels like love Tell me if I'm wrong Cause it feels like love Yeah, it feels like love Come on, come on, come on, come on Come on, come on uh. Won't you hear with me? Am I out of my mind? Or is this how it should be? You made me sing about love. So just tell me if I'm wrong. But it feels like love. Yeah, it feels like love. Yeah. So I'm skimming the kitchen, thinking about how messy it is. And I'm like, where did these pancakes come from time to throw them away but next we are working on another lower cabinet now we will have a challenge because i bought two shelves for the upper cabinet the upper part of the cabinet and as you can see the shelf only comes out halfway so we have to like do some reconfiguration or I should say just rigging it up to be able to get this slider shelf on the top shelf but I ordered another slider shelf for this side of the shelf, the lower level, so that I can put all of the cutting boards. And you'll see what I mean in a second when we installed everything, you know, because I mismeasured by, you know, an inch or so, then not all of my cutting boards fit in the shelf. So that's kind of the only unfortunate thing about these is that you do lose that little bit of space. So this cabinet on the left is bigger so it made more sense to move all of the bowls into this cabinet and then move all of the smaller stuff into that smaller cabinet on the right. Never up, never down, never like a theme in a song, clever Feeling high, feeling low at the same time Feels so right, then I'm wrong, hoping I'll be fine But I get up, I always do I never think, I always do Never thought I wouldn't jump, oh what a fool
So I feel like we're making progress. I also feel like I have a million cabinets and the project is never ending. But earlier I had the Instapot in here. And if you remember, I moved the Instapot over. We have this cabinet for just bigger pots and pans. And this cabinet is actually attached to the island. The really big pots and pans are used mostly for crawfish boils and then if we make like a big soup or anything like that. But overall, I will say it's not used a ton, but is used enough to where I'm not getting rid of them. Now, I'm not crazy about the way this cabinet is because that that shelf in the middle there is a little bit lower so I can't scoot the pots all the way back, but they at least still fit in there to where I can open and shut the cabinet, which I guess is all that matters. Next, the goal is to install the two slider shelves on the top part of the lower cabinet. And like I mentioned before, because the shelf does not come all the way out, it's just like a half shelf, Chris had to install like a support beam right there so that we can hook it on there so that I can take advantage of a top and bottom slider shelf on those lower cabinets. And this cabinet is my most used cabinets because it holds all of my pots and pans. Now I did lose a little bit of space. I had a whole extra pot in there um, that I ended up getting rid of, but at least the top part I can put all the lids and then in the lower section, I can put all of the pots and I can actually reach them because before I couldn't get to them. So I at least love having this for all of the pots. So this is the last and final cabinet. If you don't remember before, this had all of the bowls in it and I just took everything from that koozie drawer and now I'm moving it over here. So I'll show you the before and after and then I'll show you my big decluttering pile. But I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope you got some motivation, some ideas and inspiration to tackle your own space. If you're not already subscribed, I would love for you to click that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next week. Started. I got the music playing loud. How you like my outfit? I have to say I'm kinda proud. I got my dancing shoes on, and I'm feeling dangerous. Let's get this party started. Yeah, we gon' be adventurous. We went to the club like we always do. This girl caught my eye, said, How do you do? She said, I am not interested. Thank you. Then she left the room. I'll have the usual Give me the usual I'll take the usual I'll have the usual Give me the usual Another usual Studies show that about 40% of people will snoop through other people's drawers, medicine cabinets, and things in their house. Now for me, I think I would be more embarrassed by the way the drawer looks than what's actually in it. Now I'm not organizing my drawers just because I'm afraid someone will judge me if they look at it, but I'm not going to lie, that is kind of a big motivator. I've organized my drawers in my kitchen once before. It's gotten out of hand, so it's time to redo it. This time around, I am going to create a plan. So I have 11 drawers in my kitchen and I am going to reorganize 10 of the 11 drawers because one's kind of already organized already. Now, organizing just about everything in my house from going to major chaos to organizing to now reorganizing, one of my biggest pet peeves is taking everything out of the drawer and not knowing what to do with it. So to save me time, energy, 
cha mental chaos and video footage that I have to edit out if I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to go through each drawer, write down what's already in the drawer, and if it would be easier to rearrange some of the items in the drawer, what I need to declutter in each drawer, and also the system in which I'm going to organize it. Because 10 drawers is a lot, and there is no way that I'm gonna get all of this done in one day. I think one of the hardest things with starting an organizing project is one, you just don't know where to start. Two, it becomes really overwhelming, especially if you have a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff that's unorganized. And three, you don't know how to organize it. You don't know what bins to buy. You don't want to waste money on them. You're on a budget. You just don't know how to go about the process. I think that after doing several organizing projects, the key is that it doesn't have to be exactly right the very first time you do it especially if you have other people using the space and they don't always put it back exactly organized the way that it is supposed to go. So just go ahead and take that huge pressure off of you and know that you can always change things around if you need to. Next, mapping out a plan was also key for me. I did not do this the previous time I organized my drawer. And I am not a very organized person. I had chaos going everywhere. And I decided that it was just time to try and get things together. Stop wasting time searching for things, getting rid of things I don't need. So here is my second go around at this. And I have a little bit of a clearer vision, but that didn't come the very first time that I did it. Then I need to be super clear on where I'm going to start and my realistic expectation of how I can finish this. For me, I'm taking it one day at a time. I wanna organize one drawer each day. If I have more time and I'm on a roll and I keep going, then perfect. But my whole expectation of this is to do a little bit each day. So here is my master plan. I've written down what's in each drawer, what I plan to do in each drawer. Maybe it's just this little bit of decluttering. Maybe it's rearranging. But needless to say, I know exactly where I'm going to start and build that momentum to go from drawer to drawer. So let's get started and I'll show you guys exactly what we're working with in each one. My best friend didn't care about the rules, good on the weekends. I'll be in fools, drifting the deep space. So brave and so stupid, just like the movies. How it's gonna stay in the fight with you. Just thinking we would do this until we couldn't do it. Each and every high, every night with you. You and me so clueless. master plan says to start here at drawer one before I did my first organizing I used to keep foil and stuff like that in our pantry and I moved it over to this drawer along with our sandwich baggies gallon baggies and stuff like that and I had seen a lot of people have some sort of ziplock organizer storage system so i decided to go ahead and upgrade and purchase this i got this one off of amazon i liked the bamboo ones i think there's all different kinds and just kind of reorganize our baggy system a little better and like i mentioned before this is my second go around so i didn't start off with all of this product um i just kind of see if there's a need for something or something that i feel like would make the system work better and easier. I think the hardest thing is I never knew when we were out of baggies because we had all of the 
paper baggies, if they were empty, if somebody went and grabbed them and didn't throw the box away, then when I would need one, I'd go and there'd be an empty box. So this kind of, I think, will just help let me know when I need to buy some more or when we are low on something. It's just the way it is, love. My childhood was support, my feelings got ignored. Now I get back to now, love. Now I will say this is definitely worth the investment. I really like having them, but you do have to make sure that you buy the foil and the paper that will fit in that. So we buy some more of the heavier gallon size one. They didn't fit in there. So I will just, you know, put those aside. But overall, I love the transformation here. And it was super easy as well. <laughs> Now I'm on to a completely another day and I'm going to start another drawer. In my master plan, my focus in this drawer was to do more decluttering and also clean it up a bit. So I got that little rubber separator at Ikea. A lot of my kitchen organizing stuff is from Ikea. Unfortunately, some of the stuff that I looked at online, they didn't sell. And I was like, oh, they must have gotten rid of this. But then I would go up to the store and it would be at the store. So some of the stuff I don't know if they sell in stock. If they do, I'll link it. But if not, then that means that it's just, I've just been able to find it at the store. So those mats or what I'm putting down there, those are supposed to help grip the items in place so that when you're opening and shutting the drawer, if you just had items in there without being in a specific type of container or bin, then it's supposed to help them not move around. I'm going through some of the duplicate gadgets we have. For example, we don't use a cake cutting knife that much, or we have a couple of them, so I decided to get rid of some of those. And then we have like two or three different can openers, and what happens is one kind of stops working well, like the, the, it gets, the blade gets really dull, so we'll just buy another one, and then we don't ever use the one with the, the dull blade. Like it could still potentially work as a backup, but we don't use it. So I'm trying to think through the things that we need and the things that we don't need and declutter those items. Now I do like having those little nifty kitchen gadgets like a knife cutter and a strawberry peeler and a pineapple cutter. So those are all here to stay. So I had another drawer complete. Now I'm moving on to another day and I'm gonna tackle three of my more difficult drawers. These are ones that I've been avoiding, but these are the also ones that I'm doing a little bit of rearranging in. So even though like on my master sheet, this was, I don't know, drawer number six or something, I'm going to move everything that's in drawer number three 
into this drawer. I'm going to make this drawer like where all of our grilling accessories go because Chris, my husband, loves to grill. So he has more grilling accessories than I don't know most people <laughs> but actually I don't know I don't go into other people's drawers but I'm just going to make it work because here we have one where we have like all of our manuals that are like anything we had warranty on that we needed to keep that warranty number and then all of these electronics like the phones and stuff and I have to what I would have to do is plug in each one figure out how to erase everything that's on the phone currently and then i think you can donate them to an electronics store you guys let leave me a comment let me know what you do with your electronics i don't think we can trade in all of these phones some of them have broken backs and shattered screens so um I don't think you're supposed to just throw them away either. So leave me a comment and let me know what you typically do with them if you don't if you didn't trade them in to get a new phone. I also realized because we have such a big kitchen, I feel like that a lot of these spaces just become junk spaces. Like some of this stuff doesn't really belong in the kitchen, but because we have all this space for it, it just winds up here. Now I'm not done with the other drawer, but I know that I have a lot of electronics in here too that I need to go through and declutter. So I'm just gonna like take out the whole tray and do all of the electronics together. So I'm basically tackling two drawers at once. And what I plan to do is get just a tub and I don't want it in the kitchen. So I'm gonna put everything that I need to keep or take action on in, the, in a clear tub and at least get it out of this area. And also go through and declutter at least some of the manuals or things where I don't need to keep the warranty numbers on. Now, this white separator tray is one of my favorite trays. I have three of them and they're my absolute favorite. These are ones from Ikea and I want to say they were under $5. They may have been $6 at the most. I can't remember. It's been a couple years since I bought them, but it helps because you don't have to buy so many of those small clear individual trays, which can potentially add up depending on the brand that you're buying them. So these are perfect. And I like to use this for like stuff that we need, little electronics, all of our phone cords. And I also even went a step and labeled the sides of them. So I know like which charger is in which area because Chris is an Android guy, I'm an iPhone girl, and with that you have just a bunch of other stuff. Plus all the extra stuff you get, there's different chargers for each. So, you know, I'm kind of curious, are you an iPhone person or are you an Android person? Leave me a comment, I'm interested to know below. But if you have a lot of phone cords, I went through and I actually threw away some of them that were like coming apart, breaking or ones that we had for like an old, old iPad, like things that we just didn't need anymore and didn't use anymore. I decluttered some of those and I'm going to go through and keep some of the ones that we want, but I have these little, little, they're like magnet wraparounds and I've shown them before in a couple of videos, but you wrap it around the cord and then there's two magnets on each end and they stick together, keeping the cord in place. I bought them off of Amazon in a pack of, I don't know, either eight or 10, but they are really, really nifty. I 100% recommend them. So this feels a hundred times better. Just wait for the before picture. I had this extra basket in case I need to put anything else in there, then I can. Everything else is going into the donate pile, throwaway pile, electronics pile, or that bin where I'm just kind of like, I don't know what to do with it yet. But next I have that drawer completed. I'm gonna work, go back to the original drawer I was working on and see how I can make that the grilling drawer. 
I think the biggest takeaway here is that if it doesn't make sense to have it in that space, then maybe think about storing it in a container elsewhere or obviously decluttering it if you need to. A lot of times I feel like it's like it's been there. It's always been there. That's the way it is. So it's hard to reimagine something different going in that space. Like we've had that drawer like that for eight years, ever since we've been here. And I never even thought about putting something else in this drawer. So try to really reimagine like where is the functionality coming from? What would work better here? What do I need to get rid of? What can I move and just not just keeping it in one space because it's always been that way. Now I can work on all of the grilling stuff. I have taken everything out of the other drawer and now I'm going to kind of make it sa the same as it was before using these little wood separators. I got those on Amazon as well. Making three different sections here and then also decluttering what I can and making it look a little bit nicer. Now, instead of having two electronics drawers, which were not necessary, I've opened up space for more actual kitchenware. Now tackling that was a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. Now I feel like I can go about the rest of the drawers with ease. Now this was where originally where all of the grilling stuff went, but now I'm going to make this drawer the extra utensil drawer. I got this M Design organizer off of Amazon and I mainly need it to put some larger kitchen utensils in here. Before I had these in that, um, what is that bowl, pot, whatever, um, that was on top of the counter. But I am going to work to kind of clear off of the counter clutter. Uh, right now I have a lot of baby stuff, baby bottles, baby sanitizer. Um, so I feel like once rye grows out of bottles in the next, in like about four months or so, then I'm going to clear off a lot of the stuff on the kitchen counter. But this is just a start, getting that off the counter and into a drawer. We've been driving around, singing songs with this is a the declutter box. I know I haven't shown you like all the declutter, but a little bit in each drawer really does add up. But since I am making drawer number three, the new utensil drawer, then drawer number four is going to be more cleared out. We're gonna stay up at the time of our lives. The night is
So this is more grilling and meat stuff, but I did want to say that those blue containers are from the dollar store and those more clear containers are from Target. So the ones from Target, so the ones from the dollar store were obviously a dollar. The ones from Target were not much more expensive. The smaller one was a dollar, I think, and then the larger ones were two dollars. So I do recommend if you like do the extra, I really, really like the ones from Target. This is our main utensil drawer and I'm really excited about this one because it's going to be so easy. I'm going to keep everything basically how it is. I'm going to declutter a little bit and just clean it out. Nobody's attention, yeah, we just want to dance on our own. We came to party all night long. I know that if you watch a lot of organizing and decluttering videos, everyone is trying to look for the easiest way, the biggest trick, the best way to maintain it, where to start. And I think that it's everyone is so different that you just don't know until you do it yourself. Like the biggest trick is just getting started. Whether you can just tackle it all in a day or you have to map out a plan like me. Every time I do it, I do it a little bit differently, but I get a little bit better each time. Overthinking something and trying to find the per perfect solution is just going to paralyze you. It's going to delay your process. So it's an old saying. They say strive for progress, not perfection. But I always think about this when I'm doing an organizing project. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time. Just enjoy the ride. I know man passing by. Life is good. Best I've ever felt. Get me up. So and in. So where I can find myself. Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. Thankfully, this one was another easy one for me. I used to have a lot more party accessories, candles, I don't know, all kinds of stuff um that we would use for birthday parties or or stuff like that and the girls used to come in and use all of it and play with you know whatever so i decided that i had um a special spot for this in our pantry so if something else were to come up and i can put it on the right side then i will do that but for now i just had straws now i have two drawers left in our kitchen this one is almost it's become like a kid activity stuff where we have cards we have the headphones we have fans for when it's hot we have sunglasses kind of just some random stuff but um, basically i call it the kids junk drawer this one and the last one is going to be a little bit more challenging i went through kind of a couple easy drawers and i hit some hard drawers then i went through a couple more easy drawers and now i'm going to hit the hard drawers again so a little bit of a roller coaster but i don't know i think i'm on day four or five of doing this project not all consecutive days but um days that i'm dedicating to getting this organized this container had some scissors. It had stuff. I had originally had it where it would close it so that the kids couldn't get in and open it and grab the scissors and stuff. I don't want any accidents of them cutting their own hair or getting hurt, obviously. But um, I, I decided just to keep it anyway, even though I'm going to move the scissors to the craft area. And then here I'm going to dedicate 100% to just kids stuff. So it was it was mixed a little bit with kids cards and then like scissors and I don't know so um, a lot of these little card games we got from Chick-fil-a like the kids toys and Chick-fil-a or the kids toys um, that were activity at McDonald's so it's funny because they really enjoy the card games more than the toys so it's fun we'll play it sometimes together so I'm saving a lot of that stuff and also just some other random stuff
So I can't believe I've made it this far and we are on the very last drawer to organize. Now this little white tray, that's the one that I talked about earlier from Ikea. I have one in one of Chris's drawers, his junk drawer. He is going to manage that one. I'm not going to do that one. I don't know what needs to be thrown away and what's important to him. So this is the last one I'm doing. And this is all of our pens, pencils, notepads, anything that we need to quickly grab. And I do realize we have an excessive amount of pens. I don't know where they all come from. I think we just get free pens sometime or you buy a pack and um, it just adds up. So I'm going to see, I'm going to try and go through and see which ones work, which ones don't throw some away, donate some. But if it's one of those like really good pilot pens that has a nice ball tip and it just feels great when you're writing. I'm going to keep all of those and there may be a lot. So um, just so you know. So let me know in the comments down below, do you typically have your drawers pretty organized all of the time or are they like mine, they get out of hand and you have to come through and do a big cleanup? So I can't even count the number of times I've said drawer in this video, but I think the only thing that is kind of a bummer about organizing drawers is that it takes a long time and then you shut the drawer and it's like the house is a mess and it doesn't even look like you did anything. So like when Chris gets home, I'm like, Chris, go grab me something just so he can open the drawer and see how organized it is. Or I would just walk by and start opening them and be like, oh, it feels so good. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I took it one day at a time and the project is finally done and it feels so relieving. But I still have the whole rest of the kitchen to organize the upper cabinets, the lower cabinets. And if you're not already subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe and follow along the rest of my kitchen journey and so much more.